a teenager experiments with witchcraft. Echo, Echo, Azerac. What are you afraid of? And attracts danger into her home. It's here. It did not look human. The evil is coming. <laughs> this thing picked my mom up and slammed her up and down on those stairs. Can they stop it before it's too late? They were all in danger. It was after my family. I was terrified. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Nestled along the Cook Inlet, just outside of Anchorage, Alaska, lies an area with a long history of trading and mining. It's the kind of place where people come to get away from the hustle of the lower 48. Cindy and Harold Murphy moved here 11 years ago from Las Vegas. Coming up to Alaska was a dream that both my husband and I had always, you know, various times in our lives that thought it'd be kind of neat to be up here. It was everything that we, we were looking for. It wasn't as big, it wasn't as populated. Everybody seemed so friendly. We looked all around Anchorage and like, no, Anchorage is just another city. I, I don't want city life. I want to get out, get a little rural environment, a little more laid back atmosphere. Up here you can say hi and then you wind up with a two hour conversation, which appealed to me when we came up here. The couple lives with their daughter, Annie, and Cindy's mother, Judy. Hey, sweetie. Oh, hey. How was your day? Oh, it was great. I'm a currently stay-at-home mom and caregiver, taking care of my teenage daughter and my mom. Yeah, we took mom to the doctor. She got a new prescription, and <laughs> it was good. How was your day at work? Did you get the restaurant all set up? Almost. We should finish up tomorrow. Harold oh, had his own business. He was a commercial cooking equipment technician. When I first moved up here, I mean, I would put in probably 80 hours a week, but with my cell phone, I was on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Harold, Cindy, and Annie live in the main house while Judy lives next door. This is ideal because she could have her home, I could have mine, we're still close enough. My mom really does love her independence. Judy fell in love with it because there was two separate living quarters on it. I wish she could be with us, but have her own privacy. We all stayed together. That was the one thing that my husband insisted on. He did not want to come between what my mom and I have had. We we're very, very close. But for Cindy's teenage daughter, Annie, Alaska brings not only new surroundings, but also a new interest in witchcraft. for you. Did one of you guys come into my room last night? No, uh-uh. No? I just sworn I heard something. She would hear things, and she would just feel overall uncomfortable. Well, what'd you hear? It's, never mind. My daughter was a typical teenager and wouldn't elaborate, so I didn't worry too much about it and pretty much dismissed it. Do you have a big day at school today? Yeah, I have a test, actually. Mm, okay. 
Well, okay, I'm gonna take the food over to Grandma's. You better get going if you're gonna make the bus, okay? I'll pick you up around four. Fine. Bye. One night, as her grandmother sleeps nearby, Annie and her new friend stay up late. My daughter is a night owl. She doesn't sleep at night, and neither do her friends. So they were out in the yard, watching the stars and talking, and you know, teenage girls are. Did I tell you that my family is going to California for Christmas? No way. Yes. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. And you should be. <laughs> Now, are you ready to try this again? I don't know. What are you afraid of? Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zomalak. 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 That. Nothing, I'm sure. It was just an animal. I don't want to do this anymore. What? No, I'm sorry. <sighs> Fine. Come on, let's just go inside. It's getting cold out here anyways. After experimenting with witchcraft, 16-year-old Annie Murphy starts to feel uneasy in her new home. Annie decides to keep the eerie experiences to herself. I was concerned about my daughter. When I asked her what was going on, almost immediately she would clam up about it. She didn't want to talk about it. Late one night, while her friend recites a new spell. Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zomalak. Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zomalak. Annie suddenly feels a presence watching them. Zomalak. Echo, echo, Azarak. Echo, echo, Zoma. I don't want to do this anymore. Come on, let's just go inside. It's getting cold out here anyways. They said they saw a face looking out the window of my mom's home. Well, it was Grandma. You probably woke her up. No, no, Mom. I know it wasn't Grandma. They were very uncomfortable. Her friend loved coming over and spending the night with Annie and stuff, but they didn't want to be left alone. They were really scared of it. Cindy reassures the teens that it was just their imagination. My daughter thought the house was haunted. They were out in the yard. It was the middle of the night. Of course, they were going to get the creeps. Let's go inside. It's getting cold out, okay? Come on. 
I just thought, you know, she was acting like your typical teenager. The next day, Cindy checks in on her mom. Hey, Mom. It's just me. Mom, I brought some lunch over. Mom? Mom, where are you? Have you seen my watch? I can't imagine where it went to. I left it right there last night. I don't know what it's done with it now. I've looked everywhere for it. Where in the world have I put that watch? Oh, there it is. Oh. My mom, she just, all of a sudden, you know, she was acting like something was off. She would ask the same question two or three times and not realize she just asked it. It was totally unlike her. Mom, you need to take it easy, okay? Okay, I'm just tired. Oh, I... well, listen, I forgot to ask you, but did you go up in the loft last night? No, I went to bed early. Hmm. Well, Annie and her friends thought they saw you up there. No. Okay, well, just be careful. It's not safe up there. Not safe? Well, I mean, the stairs aren't safe. Oh. Okay? Mom was sound asleep in her bed. She hadn't gotten up. She insisted she was sleeping downstairs. Medicine, right? I'll be right back. Despite her growing unease with witchcraft, Annie continues her secret interest late into the night. Sweetie, you're still up. It's time to go to bed. Okay, Mom, you know I don't appreciate you just barging into my room. I was concerned about what was going on with my daughter. I just could feel something was not right. Listen, sweetie, I love you, even though you are a teenager. Now go to bed. Mm, I love you. Okay? Night, night. What's wrong? We don't have anything to eat. Well, honey, I'm gonna make supper right now, okay? Do you mind helping? Fine. You'll get the plates and the silverware. Annie! What? My daughter would go into uncontrollable rages. I used to say she flip-flopped. She would actually take on a different physical appearance that was totally unlike her. And she would say things that were totally unlike her. Annie. <sighs> Anything else? Do you mind getting the sauce and opening it for me, please? For the past few weeks, 
16-year-old Annie Murphy has been acting irrationally. We saw this face in the window. I was grappling with trying to understand what was going on with my daughter. Echo, Echo, Azura. Her parents have no idea she's been experimenting with witchcraft. I just could feel like something's not right. to the point where no matter what you said to her, she would argue with you about it. And then she would storm out of the room. And after a half hour, she'd come back and says, I don't know what I said. I don't know why I acted that way. You could definitely feel the tension and the oppression in the atmosphere. It was really hard to be in a good mood and stay positive. Most times, it was impossible. Cindy also begins to notice a change in her mom. Brought some tea. Oh, that looks good. Thanks. Oh, Thanks yeah. so much, honey. You're welcome. My mom's self-confidence and physical and emotional state kind of started deteriorating. I was asking all of her doctors, especially the one who prescribed most of the meds for the high blood pressure and stuff, are you sure that this isn't, you know, a side effect? I'm so excited about adding a few new pieces in here. I am too, but let's don't spend too much money, no, please. No, we're not. But then what color do you think we should make the couches? Oh, honey, you make the choice. Oh, it's glass. My mom had collected shot glasses for years. This one just shattered right where it was, broke, for no reason. Mom, what is it? There's someone else in here. What? She says, you're not gonna believe this, but I just saw something shadowy, dark, and I know I'm not seeing things. Cindy doesn't know what to think. Now her daughter and her mother claim they've seen something unexplainable in the cottage. Cindy decides it's time to tell her husband. I went to him and we talked about my mom. He wanted to make it okay with me, because he knew I was upset and I was worried for my mom. How is she feeling? I think okay. Cindy was constantly concerned and distressed at watching your mother go downhill physically. It's a frightening thought to a daughter. I mean, because you start realizing, well, there's a mortality involved. Your mother's not going to be around all the time. But Harold senses that Cindy has more on her mind than her mother's health. What about Annie? Well, she thinks mom's cabin is haunted. <laughs> what if she's right? I think there are a lot of possibilities to cross off the list before we get to that one. <laughs> and then that's what she told me. She thought, we had a problem with paranormal over there. As far as paranormal goes, I really didn't put much credence into it. I didn't really put much faith to the fact that it really existed, and I wasn't really worried about it. I just put it off as, OK, as teenage girls, you know. He wasn't really a believer. He thought I was making something out of nothing. The activity increases to nearly daily disturbances. She would call me almost every night. Things would get knocking around, and she'd give me a call going, it's starting. And I would run over there, and this went on for months. Cindy's mom requires constant monitoring. Hey, Mom? Yes, honey? I'm just calling to make sure you're OK. I'm going to bed soon. I dug out the walkie-talkies and charged them up so that we would be in constant contact because I wanted to be able to check on her, and I wanted her to be able to get a hold of me if something was going on. We'll call if you need anything. I'm going to leave this on. 
Okay, sweetheart. Sleep well. I think it did give her a little peace of mind. I know it gave me a little peace of mind that she could reach me. For more a haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. On the outskirts of Anchorage, Alaska, a family's happiness has been disrupted by troubling events. Echo, Echo, Azarak. After 16-year-old Annie echo, Murphy echo, begins secretly experimenting with echo, witchcraft. Echo. Look, in the window. Oh my God. Both she and her grandmother believe they've seen a ghost. Mom, what is it? There's someone else in here. What? There were a lot of times when my mom didn't know what was happening. I was fighting the thought that, oh, my mom's just getting older. You've got to come with me. She had not been that clear-headed, and she was confused, and she was doubting herself. Concern for her mom, who lives next door. Hey, Mom? Cindy keeps in touch via walkie-talkie. Yes, honey? I'm just calling to make sure you're OK. I'm going to bed soon. Too. We'll call if you need anything. Okay, sweetheart. I was upset and I was worried for my mom. Good morning. Mom, it's me. Mom, are you ready for your doctor's appointment? It's like waking up to your worst nightmare. She looked like someone had just totally beat her down. When I tried to get her up, she couldn't get up. And it's like, okay, that's it. I'm calling 911. Uh, I need an ambulance, please. Uh, it's my mom, she's fallen. Mom, are you okay? Mom, can you tell me what happened? Yes, she's breathing, but she's not answering me. Mom, please hurry, please. Judy is rushed to the local hospital. Mom, I am so sorry. What in the world happened to you? Oh, oh my gosh, what is this? When I started seeing the injuries she had when she was in the hospital, I was panicking. You could see where somebody had gripped her arms so tight they almost broke the skin. Honey, look at this. Who did that? It wasn't scratched, there was no blood, but if you take your fingernail and just 
push on your wrist and hold it down, you're gonna leave an impression of the shape of a fingernail. <laughs> Mom, what in the world? Are you comfortable? Back. Your back hurts. hurts. Okay, well, let me fluff your pillow, okay? Oh. oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What is this? She had a huge, wide scratch on her back. I was terrified. It looked like somebody had beaten my mom up. Nurse! The nurses and the doctors weren't really looking at the bruises and the scratches and the scrapes. She was in renal failure, so that's what they were concentrating on. At one point, her heart started beating too fast, so they had to stop her heart and start it again. I mean, she really went through the ringer there. Nurse! Could someone please come in? Is everything OK? No! Look at this! Oh. I'm going to grab a doctor, OK? OK. Oh, Mom. My oh. goodness, what in the world happened to you? During that time, I was an emotional wreck. Oh. I am so sorry. <laughs> While Judy remains in a state of shock, Cindy desperately tries to figure out who or what attacked her mother. But with no signs of a break-in, Cindy begins to wonder if her mother and daughter are right. Could their property be haunted? I was angry. I was trying to find out what happened. A lot of the things didn't seem to have any explanation. After a week in intensive care, Grandma Judy returns home. Judy's granddaughter, Annie, has been troubled by a dark entity ever since she started experimenting with witchcraft. Could she have unleashed the evil plaguing her family? Hey, honey. How's she doing? She's been um, sleeping for a few hours now. Well, why don't you go? I'll stay, OK, because your friends have been calling. I feel so bad, Mom. Oh, honey, it's not your fault. Grandma's gonna be okay, right? Yeah, Grandma's gonna be okay. I was on a mission after that point to make sure she was cared for and would never wind up in that position again. Mom? Mom, can you tell me what happened? Mom, I can't help you if you don't tell me what happened. Upstairs. It was like somebody snapped their fingers and woke her up. I heard something upstairs. It picked me up and was slamming me up and down. No. Oh. She couldn't see anything. No. Oh. Oh. And yet she could feel it grabbing her and picking her up and slamming her, and it just kept coming back. Outside of Anchorage, Alaska, Cindy Murphy's mother, Judy, has been viciously attacked by what she believes to be a dark entity with evil intentions. Mom! Oh my god, Mom! 
She told me that this thing picked her up and slammed her up and down two or three times. I think it's because she was in a weakened state that this thing thought it was okay to attack her. I was afraid for my family because it was getting progressively stronger and worse. Although Cindy's husband, Harold, is not convinced, he conducts research on the paranormal. He orders a digital recorder, often used by investigators to capture electronic voice phenomena or spirit voices. Well, in my mind, the only way I could solve the problem was first get an understanding of it. I spent probably three weeks online on the internet checking with all the paranormal groups around the country, all the equipment involved. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two. My husband is a problem solver. He's very analytical. If you have a mystery, he wants to solve it. What you doing, honey? Just reading up. Well, don't you think we need to ask somebody in that knows what they're doing? I'm not inviting a stranger into our home until I know for sure that this is real. I have a lot of faith in my wife. And when she said she had serious concerns, okay, well, I'm gonna find out if there's something to worry about or not. Be careful, okay? Being a skeptic, I bought the EVP recorder pretty much to disprove there was anything to worry about. Though he remains skeptical, Harold sets up a camera and the EVP recorder in his mother-in-law's cottage. Is anyone here? What do you want? Sitting there, you don't feel nothing. To me, it was about as boring as sitting in a dark closet with nothing going on, you know, about that exciting. Suddenly, the walkie-talkie he's been using to communicate with Cindy loses power. Cindy? Cindy? I had the walkie-talkie charged for seven hours. It was totally charged, and it was good for 12-hour operating time. Instantly, it beeped low battery. Something's here. Give me a sign. when I realized there was a serious problem there. There was no doubt that it's haunted. Harold now believes his family is in danger. I told Cindy to go online and let's find a group that will actually deal with the situation and remove the entity. Harold and Cindy convinced Judy to move in with them. I was scared. I wanted her out of there. I wanted her over at my house. It was... Like walking on eggshells, you were always on guard. There was no, you know, relaxing. You wanted to, to make sure you didn't miss something or turn your back the wrong time. We knew we needed help. After months of tension and fear, Paranormal technology investigations come to investigate the haunting. When I arrived, you could tell that they were just very terrified. 
and their voices would crack sometimes when they talked, and they were just very concerned about the situation that they were in. Based on everything the family has told Rob, he believes he knows what kind of entity is roaming the house. The incidences that you've described to me lead me to believe that you do have a demonic presence in your house. Demonic? Being levitated and slammed down on the ground three different times and seeing the images of this dark figure in their home, it was definitely something demonic. I was worried, frightened. It's more like a realization that there's things beyond your control. Has anyone in your family ever been involved in any occult practices, um, the spirit board, tarot cards, anything like that? He was trying to figure out what's bringing all this on. And then he asked me point blank, is your daughter dealing with anything in witchcraft? Come to find out, she had played around with the Wicca with her girlfriends and decided, no, that's not for me, and quit. No. Now, whether that created the situation or just helped fuel what was already there, I'll never know. Rob believes there is no time to waste. He recommends the team perform a ritual in Judy's home next door to exercise the demon immediately. This demon, we believed it was making Annie become very aggressive and defiant. <laughs> this just elevated until it became pretty much out of control. I think that this thing was fueling her rages and feeding off of her. When we walked into the home, we could feel a overwhelming, not a sadness, but like a depression. OK, um, can you start with the sage? And I'd like as much light in this room. Open the curtains, light the candles. Something was lurking over your shoulders. Something was watching you, then it didn't want you there. I'm going to need you to remain in continuous prayer with me. Okay. We consecrate this room in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We command all evil spirits to leave this place at once. We really felt the presence of something very negative. When I turn my head and look, I see this black shadow figure. It's here. And it did not look human. We command all evil spirits who are here to leave this place at once. For more than a year, the Murphy family has been terrified by a violent demon haunting their property. Get out of my way. I want her. A paranormal investigator believes their 16-year-old daughter, Annie, attracted the demon when she dabbled in witchcraft. This opened the doorway up for something very evil to come through. Rob and his team have no time to waste. I'm going to need you to remain in continuous prayer with me. They declare war on the demon and prepare to exercise it from the home. This was something that needed to be addressed immediately. They were all in danger. It's here. Once you start an exorcism, you can't stop. You have to complete this exorcism. We consecrate this room in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We command all evil spirits who are here to leave this place at once. The dangers in a human spirit is more psychological than it is physical. They'll play more mind games with you. The dangers in a demonic, that's another ball game. That's a non-human 
entity. They don't have to have energy. Their energy is biblical. Oh, Father, Lord. This demon, he didn't want to leave. He didn't like what we were doing. He didn't like what I was saying. I was his worst enemy. We need to continue. You need to reclaim your home. The evil is still here. But you can start feeling the real heaviness at that point. I mean, you know something's there, but it's like the room's closing in on you. The air got thicker. I thought someone was going to call the fire department. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It was a figure of a person. It had legs, it had arms, but it didn't look like a human. We actually seen this entity shoot out the front door. The evil has left this room. You could just feel the difference in energy. You could feel everything changed. We believe that it's, it's gone, it's permanently gone. It was almost like walking out from a dark building into the sunshine. A weight had been lifted off of our shoulders. Everything around us seems to be a lot more airy. There's no oppressing feeling. Now it's just like a breath of spring air. It's now been a year since the terrible ordeal. I'm so hungry. I know. <laughs> Each family member is healing in their own way. Are we ready to Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you for protecting our family and... Annie never fooled with witchcraft again. My daughter and I came through that and we're getting better. And I'm very proud of her and what she's making of herself. At this point, my mom has definitely moved past it. She doesn't live in fear anymore. She's been in her own home for almost a year and hasn't had any problems. And, you know, she's loving her life. Lord, just thank you for the time we have together. And, and thank you for Cindy's great <laughs> cooking. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it is wonderful to have our life back. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Mom. Oh, honey, you're welcome. <laughs> I know for a fact that there's a definite battle between good and evil, that there's a spiritual world that we cannot see all around us all the time. And there are things that are fighting for our very souls. Because of this experience, my perception in life will never be the same as it was. I'll tell anybody, don't dismiss the paranormal. What you don't know can hurt you. In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When Randy Irvin dabbles in the occult, he unleashes dark forces he cannot control. Night after night, vengeful spirits torment him as he struggles to protect his family. Desperate to free himself from evil's grip, Randy turns to a white witch, unaware that a battle with a demonic has just begun. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares. 
become reality. Standish, Michigan, a rural town near the shores of Lake Huron, was once the hunting grounds of Native American tribes. To this day, many of their descendants believe in the divine power of the spirit realm. With this comes a profound respect for the dead and a warning. Whoever disturbs sacred burial grounds will unleash the unholy. The year is 1974. 22-year-old Randy Irvin has lived in the area all his life. I wasn't in college. I wasn't pursuing a career. I was still kind of uh, enjoying my time away from high school before I really knew what I was going to do with my life. Eventually, Randy finds a job working for the U.S. Postal Service. I had very good income at that time. I was looking for a place of my own. Randy moves into a beautiful old fixer-upper that his father, Roy, has been renovating. My dad would take these houses and uh, refurbish and rebuild and whatever they needed, you know, to bring them up to par to have them ready for a rental property. Uh, story from the past that nobody knows about. So he was wondering if someone was buried here that shouldn't have been buried. Roy contacts a local physician who he hopes will provide some answers. So uh, what do you think? Well, I think you might have stumbled across an, an old uh, Indian burial ground. That it was a common thing to find uh, grave sites like this in Standish pretty much anywhere. What do you think we ought to do with them? I, th I think we ought to respect the dead. I'd rebury and be done with it. And they've got to go back where they belong. My dad didn't like the idea that this grave site was under his house. We put the bones back in the ground, and we kind of felt comfortable what. and confident that we did the right thing. Randy is disturbed by the discovery, yet something about it intrigues him. He becomes fascinated by Indian burial grounds and the mysteries that surround them. One day on my break at work, I stopped at a bookstore. I came across this book on witchcraft. It drew me to it. And my full attention went on this book. Randy learns that spirits can manifest from consecrated burial grounds. He also finds detailed instructions about how to conjure spirits. He had talked a lot about people that had passed away many years ago and were still caught in limbo, haven't went to heaven. These are the ones they said that you could communicate the most with. And it told me different things that I was able to do. And the one thing that intrigued me the most was to look for buried money. 
Randy's relatives have always talked about a family treasure that was buried somewhere in Michigan. This book on witchcraft told me that I could conjure up some spirits that would help me find this treasure. Hey, Randy, how are you? It's been a while. Hi, Paula. Yes. I Hi. kept yeah. this very yes. secret. I didn't share it with any of my friends. A little light reading? I didn't tell yes. anybody. No, it's actually a book for my aunt. She's into this kind of stuff. I wanted to experiment on my own without anybody coming in and telling me don't do it or that's silly, okay, this is up. dumb. I made a decision that I wanted to do this. It was my personal uh, venture and I wasn't going to get disturbed in it. That night, I went home and I opened the book on witchcraft. The book told me I had to control the environment. I had to have all noise turned off. Anything that would disturb my concentration. instructs Randy to recite the names of four spirits. I read the instructions and what to do. All I had to do was call them out, ask them to come to me. Anatosa. Lavariki, Corazina, Simosani, appear before me. Anatosa, Lavariki, Corazina. Simosani, appear before me. Anatosa, Lava Ricky, Corazina, Simosani, appear before me. What is dark, be filled with light. Bring these spirits into sight. instructions, they were supposed to show up immediately. Uh, I expected maybe some voices, maybe writing on the wall. And I waited and I waited and I sat there and after a while thought maybe I did something wrong because they weren't showing up.
I started hearing dishes clanging in the kitchen. I started to hear someone walking. I couldn't find anything to attribute the noises to. The next morning, Randy gets a call from his mother, Belva. Honey, are you okay? Belva lives in Mississippi, having moved there after she and Randy's father got divorced. I'm fine. Seriously. Yeah, I'm Look, fine. something is wrong. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it. She felt very strong that she needed to come back. That was a clairvoyant Randy. kind of a thing. She Look, said, something has happened. Almost, I don't know what it is. Back. But I'm going to find out. My mother and me were very close as far as uh, picking up how each other felt. But something bad has happened. Tammy Irvin is Randy's younger sister. Randy. She is 11 years old. Look, something is wrong. I don't know. I knew something was wrong with Randy. I didn't get the whole thing because I was just little. They don't like to talk around kids. But we listen. A month later, Belva and Tammy return to Michigan and move into Randy's house. Uh, did you have a good trip? He was pale, like sickly looking. He lost a lot of weight compared to what he did when we left. He didn't look good at all. You look tired, honey. I have a. I had a little trouble sleeping, that's all. Hey, come on, let me show you the house. coming from the far corner of the bedroom. We both started searching to see if maybe uh, a friend of mine had left a radio. Mommy, go back to bed. 
bed, honey. Everything's fine. But I heard music. Randy just had his radio on too loud, that's all. Yeah, sorry about that, kiddo. Didn't mean to wake you up. Well, it's kind of difficult trying to understand when they won't totally explain what's going on. Going back to bed. I'll be there in a minute. What was that, Mom? I'm not sure. Belva attributes the organ music to her late mother. She knew that her mother loved playing the organ. How could it be Grandma? She's dead. I know that, but organ music is just Grandma's Belva mom. believes that the music is just her mother's way of letting them know that she's looking out for them. Yeah. Grandma, right? Try to get some sleep, honey. Randy is afraid that the spirits he invoked are causing these unexplainable noises. But he can't bring himself to tell his mother that he's been experimenting with the occult. in the place where they were. I felt a lot of cold air. explain this to somebody? Who do I tell? Who's going to believe me? Who's going to listen? Randy doesn't want to worry or scare his family until he himself understands what's going on. If anything was to happen, I wanted it to happen to just me. And I was willing to go through whatever that was that was necessary to, to have all the torment reflect upon me and no one else. bedroom. Randy is petrified. It's hot breath on my leg. It never cut into my skin, but they were sharp. I could feel how sharp they were. I thought that I was losing my sanity. Randy, you all right? My God, you're shaking like a leaf. What is it? What's wrong, son? Something's happening to me, Mom. I go to sleep every night, and every night something wakes me up. 
wakes you up. The music wakes you up? No, Mom, not the music. I'm hearing things. It's... I mean, it's, it's the music, but it, it, it's, it, it's footsteps, and it, it's clanging dishes. And now there's something growling at the foot of my bed. It's growling at me like it's, it's going to rip me apart. I can't see it, but I know it's there because it's... It's breathing and clawing at me. All right. Sit down and take a deep breath. Am I going crazy? Am I going out of my mind? Andy, listen to me. I believe you. Whatever this is, we'll, we'll figure it out together. Did you hear that? It's over there, behind the TV. in the house, Belva turns to the Book of Psalms for protection. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sinners. Somebody else was there, and we just didn't know who or, or what was causing it. I just know that it was going on, and it was scary. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. As Belva nor continues to recite verses from the Bible, the vicious growling slowly subsides. Brandy prays that this will be the end of his affliction. Horazina Simosani, appear before me. The torment that plagues Randy at night takes its toll during the day as he struggles to focus on his job. I was getting uh, mentally exhausted, emotionally exhausted. It was because almost every single night I was wrestling with these things. Hey, this package isn't for me. I'm 633 Maryland, this is 639. That's across the street. At home, Randy tries to spend some quality time with his sister, but his mind is elsewhere. Do you hear that? Do I hear what? heard scratching from a door to a room that my dad had some antiques stored in there.
This thing literally had her in, in a chokehold, and I believe trying to take the life right out of her. I think I was shocked and freaked out all at the same time. This situation really convinced me these things were evil. They were out to get us. And it wasn't just me now that was experiencing the torment. We didn't know where we are going to go, but we headed for the car because we had nothing else in our mind except to escape. Randy and his family are forced to move. They rent a small house across town. It's the only place they can find on such short notice. Randy is overwhelmed with guilt. Can not open her? He knows that he is the reason why his family is suffering. Honey, everything's gonna be okay. I'm fine. I felt a lot of remorse what I brought upon my family. I need to tell you something. Dad found uh, some bones underneath the house. They were a part of an Indian burial grave. I didn't think it worked at first because nothing happened, but I was wrong. My God, Randy, what have you done? I bought a book on witchcraft. She was very shocked that I did that. I don't know what else to say. She Mom. knew I had kicked something open. It's, it's all my fault. I did this to us. I, I'm the one responsible for all of this happening. Honey, listen to me. Everything is going to be OK. We're safe. <gasps> not going to stop. They followed us. They don't want the house. They want me. Mom? I heard weird noises. The noises. Yeah. All of it. It came with us. It followed us. Go, go back to bed, honey. E everything's OK. You want to know why it's still happening, but nobody's given any answers? Randy is desperate. I wasn't going to give in to these creatures. I wasn't going to crawl in a corner somewhere and die. I had made a decision that I'm going to find help one way or another. I, Although he's not I a member of any church, Randy sure, seeks right. the help of a local minister. I didn't know where else to turn. Well, God is here for you to help, my son. So tell me what's on your mind. Do you believe in witchcraft? Witchcraft was created by Satanists to dispel the Lord's power. They prey on the weak-minded, creating an imaginary world of demons. But it's not real. It's a fabrication 
created by you. No, Sugiya. I don't think you understand. You... These things are real. They're not just in my mind. I, I, I know that. I'm awake when they attack. He said, I've never come across a situation like this before. I've never heard anyone having a problem with having spirits and, and entities like that taunting them. Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your life? Have you asked for his forgiveness? You, you're not listening to me. Okay, you're not, you're not listening. These things want to destroy my family. Don't you understand that? I don't need you to preach at me right now. What I need is your help. Have you considered talking to a therapist? I'll pray for you, my son. I went to several different churches, different faiths. I got the same answer from every church and every pastor I went to see. They didn't know how to help me. There's got to be someone out there. If these things are demons or devils, somebody has got to know something. I wanted my life back, and I was fighting for everything that was within me. I didn't know how to fight, but I wasn't giving in. Determined to put an end to his family's torment, Randy decides to take a risk. He figures since witchcraft released evil into their lives, perhaps witchcraft can send it back. Belva is uneasy with the idea, but realizes that they have no other choice. If we don't do something, what, what, what next? Who's next? Tammy? All right, son. Randy contacts a white witch named Mike Bosick. A white witch believes in good, believes in God, and believes in trying to help. Mike practices the traditions of Wicca, a modern pagan religion based on ancient witchcraft originating in Western Europe. Don't mom me. It's late. Go to bed. Wiccans believe in a reverence for nature, and the use of magical circles for ritual purposes. I thought it was an answer to a long-awaited prayer. That will protect the house and us. He knew how to close the doors if I had opened doors that I shouldn't have. He knew how to send these things back. To guard them from malevolent forces, Mike must first create a ring of protection around the house. Mike warns them that they must stay inside or the barrier will weaken and their safety will be jeopardized. This is Mike's first attempt at expelling unholy souls from a person's life. I looked at it as a way of expanding my experiences. A lot of it is a leap of faith. You, know, you have to trust in that you're doing everything right. Guardian spirits, hear my call. In the dark corners of the night. Mike must circle the house three times to complete the protective barrier. He hopes it will be strong enough. And then return from when you came. As I was constructing the ring, the wind was picking up. Guardian spirits, hear my call. As all of this intensified, I knew it was something trying to stop me. 
And if there's something trying to stop me, I must be on the right course. And when you're dealing with the occult, you can't have no sign of weakness. You have to be determined and with a resolve that shows the spirits that you're the one in control, not them. the third ring, the wind stopped. Will you join me in the circle? As part of the protection ceremony, Mike constructs a pentagram on the floor. It just symbolizes the five important deities of Wicca. Unlike a satanic pentagram, the Wiccan star is not inverted. Mike lights candles and pours salt around the pentagram, sealing the protection ring. It is imperative that we stay within the pentagram until I complete the ceremony. Unfettered spirits, far from home. You the candle started to flicker, which to me meant that something trying to come through. Come to this place, do not delay. And it was something I didn't want there, but I felt confident enough in the strength of the ring I had set up. And force all the unholy ghosts away. To complete the ceremony, Mike must blow out the candles. Belva and Randy are relieved. The nightmare is finally over. I was getting excited, because from what I understood, this gentleman knew what he was doing. fails against the dark forces of the occult. This thing was a lot more powerful than I realized. Randy can no longer ignore the dangers of tampering with witchcraft. He threw fuel onto the fire and made it worse. Unable to offer another solution, Mike leaves the house. I know, baby. Try not to think about it. Randy, Belva, and Tammy are left alone to deal with the aftermath. What's happening to us? I don't know, honey. I just don't know. 
Will we be okay? Yes. We are going to be okay. Everything's going to be just fine. started falling into a deep depression. I didn't know where to reach out. I didn't know who to reach out to. I knew that the edge of insanity was in front of me, and I could cross that line at any time. Hey, Randy. Hey, what's going on? You know that, uh... You know that book on witchcraft? And that's when I broke down and kind of started explaining what I've been going through. You think I'm crazy? No, I don't. Randy, I know someone who can help you. Paula directs Randy to Nora Rayner, a healer known to help those who have been oppressed and tormented by demonic spirits. When I went to her house, I kind of refrained a little bit outside of wondering how a woman could help me in this situation when I went everywhere else. Looking to get a haircut? Yeah, you don't usually get many men around here, but have a seat. Nora Rayner appears in silhouette to protect her privacy. When I first met Randy, he was in a terrible physical state. He was very thin, very nervous, very anxious, and he looked very sickly. Look, I, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have come. I shouldn't be here. Are you okay? Nora senses that Randy is deeply tormented. You want to talk about it? I want to die. Why? I did something stupid and I put my fam family in danger. He came to me out of desperation in a state of fear. Did you uh, ask for help? God. Listening to him, I just knew he needed deliverance. Do you have the answers? And I knew I could do that. I believe I have a gift from God, an ability to heal. But in order for me to help you, you must believe in God. Can you do that? Says, I'm gonna say a prayer out loud, Randy, and I want you to repeat it for me, and I want you to mean the words that I recite to you. Don't just recite them, I want you to mean exactly what you know, you're know you saying. Jesus, I ask that you forgive all of my sins. Nora says a prayer of deliverance. My Savior and deliver me from what I am going through. <clears throat> I, I can't, I can't, I'm trying, I, I can't say it, say it. Take your time, focus on his love. Randy finds himself unable to recite the prayer. I felt myself going partially unconscious. Jesus! I 
prayed deliverance before, but never imagined anything like this. was important to me to stay strong in my faith. If I would have let my guard down, I would have lost. I would have lost the battle for Randy's life. I knew that I was liberated. I wasn't dead inside anymore. Someone cared. It was him. It was Jesus that cared enough to uh, set me free. Soon after Randy's deliverance, the family returns to the house. Nora believes they must bless the place where dark forces were first unleashed. many blessings and ask that you bless this house and this family. She felt a bottomless pit had been opened and she wanted to go back there and close it. There's a power of darkness out there that's lurking to feed in to anyone who has this curiosity about the supernatural. Everything's gonna be okay. I wouldn't advise anybody to mess with witchcraft. I wouldn't advise anybody to dabble. It may not affect you as it did me, but you will open the door. You will let something in your life. It is a door that you can't close. 